so then uh, this looking back a little bit, a little broad perspective, which we always, we have this kind of you see German Lord Brahma mentality, got to control everything. So the basic principle here is that the sages of Naimasiranya, incapable of doing good for humanity because they're doing the wrong sacrifice, ask Sudha Goswami what is the right thing to do. And uh, he explains that he heard the answer to that along with Maharaj Parikshit. While Maharaj Parikshit was actually as- answering the questions, he heard it from Sukadeva Goswami. And then Sukadeva Goswami then uh, narrates how um, Narada heard this story from Brahma. Right? And then uh, Maharaj Parikshit asked the question, how did Narada uh, uh, defund, that's a Spanish word, uh, spread, spread, distribute? How did Narada distribute all this knowledge after uh, he heard it from Brahma? And Prabhupada says pretty much that's the whole Bhagavatam from this point on. How Narada is spreading this all over the universe to Daksha, you know, to the, the Prachetas, like that, you know. So uh, after these questions by Mars Parikha to Sukhade Goswami, um, he begins to answer in this chapter how the living entity gets involved with matter and how he gets free by darshan of the Lord, you know, and uh, how, how the Lord uh, displays his energies. And in that process, then, it's described how Brahma, Brahma got this knowledge originally. And he got it by, by doing proper penance, proper austerities. Uh, and he didn't know who he was or what his purpose was. He was confused. You know. But he heard this, this voice, and he had this uh, devotional attitude in his heart, you know, submissive attitude to follow instructions from higher authority. And then he is able to see the kingdom of God, everything else, and, of course, once you see that, you see yourself also. Yeah? Um, I always remember the example of Arnold Schwarzenegger. He was off one day when he was in high school on a bike ride with Heidi. <laughs> and he and Heidi went along down by the river. And Arnold, for the first time in his life, saw these guys lifting weights. They had a little outdoor studio down by the, down by the river there side. And as soon as Arnold saw it, he kind of, might, kind of knew who he was, you know. So he went down there with Heidi, and they're looking at the guys, and he tried out some things. And after a while, he said, Hi- Heidi, do you think you could go home by yourself? And she said, well, okay, Arnold. You know, so she left. And he just, he just went on it like that, and the guys were saying, well, it's your first time. Take it easy, you know. But he couldn't stop. So on the way home, he said he was so exhausted, he fell off his bicycle and <laughs> scratched himself, you know. But from that time on, he knew who he was. He was Arnold Schwarzenegger, the weightlifter. So when Lord Brahma has darshan of Vishnu, which means Vishnu's paraphernalia, the spiritual world, then he becomes self-realized in so many ways. Of course, he can't actually go there, but he can see it. Okay? And so number six, you have... Uh, yeah. So then after Brahma has this darshan... So number, number six, you have on the screen now? Yes, it's, uh, it's uh, Lord Brahma said, yeah, it's a uh, third. Yeah, okay. Yeah. So then Lord Brahma, he asked basically verses 25 to 30. And today, of course, we're on uh, 28. But we see there's you know, Lord Brahma after having this darshan. It's like ourselves. You know, we, maybe we wake up in the morning, our alarm clock goes off, and, you know, take a shower, <laughs> wash your mouth, you know, chant Hare Krishna, get four rounds done before Mangalarti. Oh, yeah, okay. Yeah. So we start doing the austerity, and we start to get the association of the holy name, and then Lord Brahma said, this is 25 through 30, O personality of Godhead, you are situated in every living entity's heart as a supreme director, and therefore you are aware of all endeavors by your superior intelligence without any hindrance whatsoever. Okay. So then it's kind of stupid for Lord Brahma to ask a question like that because you know, Vishnu is in his heart, so before it comes out of his mouth, you know, it should already be there. So he says, in spite of that, the fact that you're in my heart, my Lord, I am praying to you to kindly fulfill my desire. Okay. One, may I please be informed how, in spite of your transcendental form, you assume the mundane form. 
although you have no such form at all. Okay? And two, and please inform me how you, by your own self, manifest different energies for annihilation, generation, acceptance, and maintenance by com- combination and permutation. God. This is very Vedanta Sutra type thing, very, com- very compact. How do you assume the mundane form? And then how do you manifest all the different aspects of that form? Okay, next slide, number seven. O oh, master of all energies, <clears throat> please tell me philosophically all about them. Okay, the energies like that. And he's asking philosophically. He wants to get a very uh, profound understanding. In today's verse, you play like a sli- like a yeah. This is a verse. Uh, you play like a spider that covers itself by its own energy, and your determination is infallible. And he'll go on to say, "Please tell me so that I may be taught in the matter by the instruction of the personality of Godhead, and may thus act instrumentally to generate living entities." without being conditioned by such activities. So he's acting, asking these questions not just because it's, he's, he's like interested, it's, it's, again, it's more fun than, than watching Spider-Man. He wants to see like, you know, the movie, oh, huh, what fun. No, he actually wants to be able to understand God for the purpose of being able to do his service. You know? If Krishna is creating his energies, like Ramananda Prabhu was describing yesterday, the com- company is coming to us, asking us to do things, and then we've got to ask, okay, what, what's the payment schedule going to be? You know, what kind of materials are you going to supply? You know, what kind of things do we have to supply? So Lord Brahma is asking these questions, no? And so he can understand Krishna's energies, not to try and compete with Krishna like uh, Rikasura, but actually to understand how to be, to be a proper instrument. So we also have to ask the same thing ourselves. We have to know enough about Krishna, what his plans are to do our service. But the other thing is that he doesn't want to be also then uh, conditioned by the service. Like somebody may have a real inclination towards, you know, romance. And somebody else may have an inclination, you know, towards eating. And somebody else may have an inclination towards power, you know, uh, political power. So if we ask the guy with the political power to please become temple president, he may say, Prabhu, I don't think it's such a good idea, really. You know, I have this real problem with, prestige and this stuff and I'd rather kind of keep a more simple position so we say but Prabhu you know you're the guy you're the doer you have the motivation and you have some good qualifications so he says okay then where do you want me to go what do you want me to do and please you've got to give me a hand here because I know I kind of get carried away by this stuff at times and of course we know what actually happened you know, Lord Brahma challenged Krishna's power you know, maybe more than one time so he's asking that oh my Lord the unborn you have shaken hands with me just as a friend does, just as a friend does with a friend, as if equal in position. I shall be engaged in the creation of different types of living entities, and I shall be occupied in your service. I shall have no perturbation, but I pray that all this may not give rise to pride, as if I would have supreme. So very, very nice explanation you know, where Brahma is situated. You know, he's going to do the service. He's realized that. He wants to understand Krishna so he can do the service. And he wants to, wants to have an insight into what's happening, a little bit of insight. There's a very nice picture. Uh, maybe I mentioned this before. Um, uh, Bhakti Siddhanta Das in, in Vrindavan, you know, the, uh, has a big art gallery, everything else, their art studio. And he did a lot of the work in the temple too. So many years ago, he organized a uh, competition with a bank in Delhi. Not, he, the bank was sponsoring the competition. He wasn't competing with the bank. So, and together with them, they organized uh, an art, art competition called Krishna and Rama in Art. And uh, many people actually contributed. It was quite a few, few, few years ago, maybe 1980 or something, 85, 82. And so maybe, I don't know who would respond now. I think even still, we'd be surprised how many people would respond. So the, um, the second place prize was a very big picture of Bhishma Dev's face, Bhishma, Bhishma's face. 
and it had so you know he was he was you know, maybe mature age and so many wrinkles on his face. And as you got closer, you could see that each wrinkle was a small a representation of some pastime that had happened. And it's interesting that each of these events in his life left uh, its, its mark on his face. And that therefore the deep character and stuff was produced by the different experiences and austerities he went through in his life. Then uh, the first place prize was a, a picture of Draupadi. And it looked like somebody had been knocking on her door, somebody she knew, you know, she trusted at night. And so she'd come to the door, open the door in her night dress with her hair, her hair open, and she was holding a candle in front of her with her, her hand in front, of, in, front of, in front of it to be polite, not, you know, cause a problem for whoever opened the door. And so you looked at it and you thought, oh, okay, it's nice, you know, it's dropping his covered flame, you know. But how, how did this beat the second place picture? This is, you know. And then as you're looking at it, suddenly, you know, you, you see that the depth of the thing and it's shocking. And the depth of the thing is that her shadow which is being cast by the candle, which you don't notice really at first, is death personified. It's very spooky, spooky kind of death, death shadow, you know. So here, here's Dopati, this innocent young, young girl, you know. And who is she? She's walking around. She's born for the death of many, many a prince, many a kshatriya. You know, don't, don't become attra- attracted to her brother. She, she, her shadow is death. So if she knew this, could she have carried on like this? You know, basically just a human being, you know, a girl, and she actually knew what was going to be her destiny, what she was going to cause. You know, she might have even committed suicide or something. You know? So how much Krishna informs us about what his plan is and what we're supposed to be doing and what aspect of it he gives to us. Like his famous, like, what is it? Uh, Satsarup Maharaj was trying to, like, uh, get the ladies not to cook with mustard oil. We heard that, right? And then uh, Prabhupada said, mind your own business. <laughs> like that. So that what is our business? You know, what is our business in this whole operation? But we have to have some kind of confidential knowledge, usually to be confidential servants and fit it in a very like effective way. You know? so let's go on with the purport here then, I think. Yeah. Okay, next verse, number eight. Go back to today's verse. Kadasya amoga sankalpa, uh, urna, urnanabir yatornate, tatata vishayam dehi manisham mai madhava. Okay, you're a spider. Your determination never fails. You know? So please tell me scientifically about the spider knowledge. So, uh, then we have uh, slide number nine. Number nine. The actual purport by Srila Prabhupada to this verse. By the inconceivable energy of the Lord, every creative element has its own potencies. Okay, fire, water, air, earth, ether. Known as the potency of the element, the potency of knowledge, and potency of different actions and reactions. So every, every element has these three. In the next slide I'll, I'll show you what they appear to be. Then Prabhupada goes on and says, by a combination of such potential energies of the Lord, there is the manifestation of creation, maintenance and annihilation in due course of time by different agents like Brahma, Vishnu, and Mahesh. So on the one hand, you know, Krishna is producing the puppet He's, he's sewing together a little hand puppet, you know, Mickey Mouse or, or, or somebody, Spider-Man, you know. And he made a little cloth hand puppet. And then he holds that, and with his other hand, he slides into it, you know, and, and manipulates the whole thing as time, as the super soul, Paramatma, as Shuradakshe Vishnu. As Shuradakshe Vishnu, he enters into all the elements, and externally we see, we see Shuradakshe Vishnu, we're never separated from God. Anybody who's conscious of time is, is in touch with Shri Daksha Vishnu. That's his external manifestation. So on the one side, on hand, Krishna is creating the energies, uh, time, space, uh, mass, flavor, fragrance, texture. What's another one there? Uh, thinking, 
understanding, you know, yeah. And on the other hand, other, with the other hand, he's actually mm-hmm. entering into it. But but the, the puppet has a nose, it has an eye, it has a mouth. You know? And these things, when they're stimulated by the time factor, they interact and produce uh, this reflection of the spiritual world. Okay, next slide, number 10. Yeah. So here, if we go back to uh, 2523, we're on 2.9. And back, back when Lord Brahma is really describing the creation, we see one verse there, 2.5.23. Mahatas tu vikorvanad, raja sattvo pabrimhitat, tama pradana stvababad, dravya jnana kriyatmakaha. So dravya means matter, jnana means material knowledge, and kriya atmakaha predominantly material activities. So in the purport, Prabhupada says, in other words, the gross matters are adibhutam, uh, the, the gross matters are adibhuta, okay? Their maintenance is adidhaivam, and the initiator of material activities is called adiatma. Uh, in the material world, these three principles act as prominent features, namely the raw materials, its regular supplies and its use in different varieties of material creations for sense enjoyment of the bewildered living entities. Now, I didn't get a chance to check back and see if these what, what it's called, but maybe it's not. You know? I'm confused by the little myself. These three three things. But Pup Lee says that every living every every energy, the Supreme Lord's energies. Um, I can look at it myself here. Yeah, you know, the potency of the element itself the potency of knowledge, and the potency of different actions and reactions. So it seems like that's what it's talking about. So, so and Papa says the material elements have a little bit of potency to react by themselves. For example, you may park your car, and uh, you know the brake may slip off or something, and it may roll down the hill. And it may even hit like an embank, uh, a, a tilted part of the road and go, go sideways or something a little bit. But we know that very quickly it's going to crash and it's going to stop. But yeah, it does have some potency to act by itself. You know, that's just, and so, so the, this, what do you call it, the, the actual potency of the matter itself, and then some kind of, uh, what do you call it, the, the, the daiva, devatas have to be involved with everything. Our hands are symbolic representations of Indra. So just the fact that Indra is there behind everything gives him a certain you know, Indra, Indra-type potency like that. And then finally... Uh, every every living entity wants to enjoy, so I guess you might say the enjoying spirit is there in the matter itself. Yeah. And Prabhupada says Brahma, Vishnu, Shiva. So it's, it's all very personal. Our whole Western knowledge, uh, whole Western science, more and more, is aimed at eliminating any kind of personality from reality, like that. You know? They accuse us of worshiping idols. But they say that we are made of nothing but carbon, carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, and nitrogen. That's it. So you should have, you know, attention towards real people, not these false idols. But ours are made of brass, and yours are made of carbon. You know, what's what's the difference? It, more and more, I see that this is coming choking, you know, choking whatever little bit of knowledge there is out out of personal relationships, out of the material world, and trying to establish an impersonal idea of matter. But matter itself apparently has a little bit of lusty nature to it. Okay, let's go down here. Papa continues, slide number 11. Brahma creates, Vishnu maintains, and Lord Shiva destroys. By all such agents, but all such agents and creative energies, creative energies are emanations from the Lord. Okay, all such agents and creative energies uh, are emanations from the Lord, and as such, there is nothing except the Lord or the one supreme source of different diversities. Okay. Next one down here. I pushed the wrong button. Okay, slide 12. The exact example is the spider and the spider's web. The web is created by the spider and is maintained by the spider. And as soon as the spider likes 
the whole thing is wound up within the spider. The spider is covered within the web. Now, I look for some pictures of spiders, but they're all very scary and nasty. So I put a picture of a juggler in instead. So the juggler's got these uh, maybe three balls in the air. I think the most anybody ever's got is like about ten. By making them go in a circle, somebody got about ten going in the WC fields. And so he maintains it in the air. He has to keep it going at every moment. There's really no such thing as inertia. You know, uh, Newton, Newton's law is a little demoniac. That things will go on by themselves. No. At every moment, the juggling show has to be carried on by Krishna. You know? Yeah. So a good example of the spider. Then we come down to the last part of the purport, number 13. And Prabhu says, if an insignificant spider is so powerful as to act according to its will, why can't the supreme being act by his will in the creation, maintenance, and destruction of the cosmic manifestations. By the grace of the Lord, a devotee like Brahma, or one in his chain of disciplic succession, can understand the Almighty. Yes, can understand the Almighty, personality of Godhead, eternally engaged in his transcendental pastimes in the region of different energies. Uh, so, of course, Prabhupada makes this point that from Krishna's point of view, everything's good. You know? From the point of view of the governor, uh, the Department of, Rec- Department, of, Department of Parks and Recreation is just as good as the, uh, the Department of Penal Servitude. <laughs> you know? they're, they're both useful. And his idea is that in the penitentiary, people will do penance, you know, and they'll come to their right consciousness. You know, they'll be reformed and understand their mistake and then desire to correct it. You know? And so therefore, he has very sincere interest in uh, what's happening in the prison system, how people are being reformed. And of course, he goes there himself from time to time and talks to people and shows them that, yes, I'm really concerned about you. And I hear you have this kind of complaint which I can maybe deal with about you know, how many chapatis you're getting or, or something like this and that. You know? Or even complaints about the, uh, the Brahma uh, the uh, the warden in each prison. You know? and so Krishna is eternally engaged in his transcendental pastimes in the region of different energies. Not only the superior energy, but also the uh, the external energy. You know? Of course, the example is uh, Kubja, who was uh, he was described as she was Supranaka in her previous lifetime. And she wanted to enjoy uh, with Krishna, you know, personally, you know, but she wanted to be the enjoyer still. Again, we give the example, it's like somebody who takes a vow to only eat prasadam. They won't eat anything you know, but prasadam. But we want good prasadam. So this Krishna associates with Kubja. As he associated with her and gave her gratification she desired with him. You know, four kinds of people approach Krishna. Those in distress, those in want of money, those who want to stimulate their... their their mental activity with curiosity, you know, and, and the Krishna satisfies their desires. And gradually, because of that, depending on their, on their greed, their motivation, they, they all become purified and they just want to associate with Krishna. Well, Krishna is the supreme enjoyer. Bhoktaram yagatapasyam. So therefore, the only way to associate with him is really by service, by, by satisfying his desires. And, of course, is saying he's internally engaged in pastimes, eternally engaged in different transmittal pastimes. So all this requires, you know, uh, what's the word, cooperation, participation. You know, I mean, if, if somebody said, oh, come with us to, I don't know what word it is now, to Disney World, to the Epcot Center, <laughs> or something like that, you know, you might, you might think, well, you know, if you're experienced with the things, you know, oh, my God, it's not all that great, great a place. But, of course, children are something else. They want to go to some amusement park. And, of course, how many places are there of amusement? Theaters, uh, what is it called, event centers, malls. You know, malls are like big, you know, subtle enjoyment centers. See this, see that. You, know, you can have this, you can have that. Trade in your pious credits here. Trade in your pious credits there. You know? And so the spiritual world, as we understand it, is basically like a big, 
Disneyland. <laughs> maybe Walt Disney went to heaven. I don't know he's working there. You know? That's maybe only like 20% completed. You know, it's, it's just barely got off the ground as far as Krishna is concerned. You know? And all the different rides and amusements, they're all fitting in with the previous ones. And they don't, don't you know, make it so that somebody becomes bored, you know, bored with the previous amusements. But rather now the previous amusements become more and more interesting, more fun. And Krishna and Radha and the gopis, Brisbasis, they love to play Ram Leela. In Vrindavan you go to Kamyavan, Kama, and that's where you'll find Ashokvan, uh, the bridge, and then so many monkeys, you know. Because Radha and Krishna are playing, uh, playing at being Sita and Ram, you know. And maybe Sridham becomes Ravana or something, you know, Radharani is older brother. And so it's so much fun, they don't want to stop, you know. And so because of that, then they expand themselves. So they can go on playing Ramayan, you know. And of course, Hanuman, does he, how does he understand Radha, Krishna, Leela? These things are connected to that level like that. So it's our kind of uh, comprehension that Brahma has to fit into all this, understand it properly. And it's not like kind of like a boring job, you know. What are you doing today, Prabhu? Oh, Prabhu, I have to do the noon arti to the deities. <laughs> you know, saying like some kind of curse, you know. Like that, you know, uh, you know. But no, Brahma's thinking, oh my God, I got to create the material world, you know. But yeah, it's a service to Krishna. It's the best use of a bad bargain. But at the same time, too, from Krishna's point of view, it's also extremely fun. You know? One time, Chaitanya, Mati Chaitanya Maharaj is describing how uh, Krishna comes and he smashes different demons with his club, you know, and he doesn't wash the blood off. He just lets it dry. And every now and again, when he's in Vaikuntha, since he can't have an act, he was smashing past him in Vaikuntha. He kind of looks at the club and the blood, blood like that, and really says, ah, yeah, that was a good time. <laughs> but they kick in some blankety blank there. Yeah. So Krishna, you know, from his perspective, even the material world is fun. From our perspective, it's a play, a drama. But from, from probably says from our point of view, it's reality. You know, it's unfortunate. So to kind of finish off here, then we had, um, we're, we're really absorbed now in, of course, our own Sankirtan activity. And it's very much related to this because we've, we've been doing in a kind of a, one thing, basically it comes down to two things, you know, our work, our Sankirtan work extremely during the daytime here. Uh, we're trying to help the Ministry of Education. And for that, we're organizing, um, uh, trying to help, you know, the preschool, the primary school, and then university studies, university preaching, you know. So that, that's kind of like on the, uh, the Varna side or the ashram side, Brahmachari, Grihasta, like that. <clears throat> that we, we do grow up in ISKCON. We do have some, some responsibility towards understanding and using the Varna ashram system like that. But along with that, of course, the real thing is the Sankirtan to try and help people uh, to get the mercy of Lord Chaitanya and become qualified. That's what education means. How to find our position in the Sankirtan movement, how we can fit in and help Lord Chaitanya. Like that. And then on the uh, high side, very high side, is of course all of this, what we're trying to give people, Krishna Prema Padayate, is we're trying to give them the most confidential form of self-realization, which is their relationship uh, not with Jehovah, not with Buddha, you know, not with Confucius, you know, not with Socrates, you know, uh, but with, not with Bill Gates, you know, but with uh, you know, Gopijana Balama, you know. And that's very high, of course, very high, you know. And so, so we may, it may resonate with different, different aspects of divinity and different kinds of things like that. It may resonate with the ocean, with the sun, with these things and really realize that we're on this level, okay? And we're hearing about other things, but we're just, you know, not really relishing them. But by associating with Lord Chaitanya, then we can begin to see these things from a very high perspective like that. And he, even if it's not, not completely, um, what's the word, on a manifest level, subtly it's there. It's, it's part of the background music, you know? This, of course, if you know movies, when you're watching a movie, uh, this kind of step back, Become, become a Buddhist, a Buddhist 
step back from the movie. Well, one time I was watching it, you know, here like uh, the Dick Orson, your son, Abhishek, they, they watch the football games, you know. So in between the football games, they have these like uh, maybe 20-second commercials. You know? And, of course, you can just imagine how much money, you know, goes into that 20 seconds. You know? So I was counting for him how many times they changed uh, and how many changes they had of scene perspective like that. So I think within uh, 20 seconds, there were 18 changes of, of scene. But we don't notice that. We're, tra- we're trained to ignore it. You know? And the other thing is there's music and there's sound. One very, very big director in the very beginning, his name was Eisenstadt, he said the movie is a snake made of sound where you hang visual images. And, of course, this goes along with our confidential knowledge of the hierarchy of the elements. You know? um, as a very famous movie, we mentioned this before, How the West Was Won. Uh, I think Gregory Cooper is the, uh, the hero, and he's got to face some outlaws. It's very interesting. He's got some real, like, you know, what's the word, like, social challenge in it. And, of course, the very, very famous line, a man's got to do what a man's got to do. <laughs> like that. Maybe even you remember the, the music, you know. Da, 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 da. It's, it's a that the movie was a complete dog. It was a flop, and the guy sold it for something like probably in the modern world, which would be something like let's say like you know seventy five thousand dollars or something. You know, you can imagine buying a major studio movie for seventy five thousand dollars. So the guy who bought it went back into almost nothing in change of the editing, but went through and put this theme song in and changed a little bit of the background music, and of course it became one of the greatest classics in the history of, of, of cinema. You know? So we, a lot of this background stuff we don't think about, <clears throat> and the fact that we're acting devotionally, we don't think about it. Ajamil, Ajamil was saying Narayana, Narayana, Narayana. He could have named his kid anything, you know? You know, but, but he named him Narayan, okay? And he was saying Narayan again and again, you know? So the background was that he was actually performing some kind of devotional service, maybe adoshrada, like that, you know. Yeah. And so as we become purified, you know, begin to understand the background condition of our service, you know, then even though it may not always be so conscious in the forefront, we're, we're going on like that internally and we're becoming purified by the, uh, and stimulated by Krishna. We're stimulating our background perspective like that. No. Okay. Um, so anyway, our, this program, we're, we, so we've been trying to work especially in the area of Carl Jung. Next slide, it's number 14. How this all applies in our, our life here. You mentioned this before. So th- this is actually a slide that we're going to be using uh, on uh, Sunday at our program at the Global Mall here. And it's a title we've developed for a long time. works very well. Anybody else can get involved in this, please. Join us. It's a big project. It's nice. So the title is Science, Psyche, and Spirituality. Carl, C., Carl G. Jung's Encounter with Classical Indian Mysticism. And, of course, you can change the title, the last part, a little bit. But those topics are very, very nice. Science, Psyche, and Spirituality. Next slide. Yeah. So here we see a little extract from the Encyclopedia Britannica. Carl Gustav Jung, born July 26, 1875, in Kesh, well, Switzerland, departed. They said died, but I put departed. Departed June 6, 1961, in Konchnach. Swiss psychologist and psychiatrist who founded analytical psychology. So these thumbnail, thumbnail biographies are very interesting. The one dictionary in the back, I remember they had thumbnail biographies. And I always remember it said, uh, Marquis de Sade, the word sadism, of course, comes from his name, Marquis de Sade, and the short biography was French soldier and pervert. <laughs> so, so, so we can all stop for a second and think what, What's going to come down for us in our, our one-line biography, you know? Uh, Harsh Pradhan, you know, blah, blah, blah. 
Ramananda Das, blah, 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 Vidagda Madhava, Hanuma Pishak Swami. What, what are they going to put down for us at the end of the whole thing to summarize it? You know, like that. Oh, Hawaiian soldier and pervert. <laughs> so anyway, he got Swiss psychologist and psychiatrist who founded analytical psychology. And he was looking very, cl- very classical in the picture, very elegant. Slide number 16, next one. And... Okay, is also from the Botanica. A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada, born September 1st, 1896, Calcutta, India, departed November 14th, 1977. Vrindavan Uttar Pradesh. Indian religious leader and author who, who in 1965 founded the International Society for Krishna Consciousness, commonly known as the Hare Krishna Movement. Ah, okay. Do a little math here. Uh, I don't know if it comes up as a click or not. You may have to click on it again. Um, but it comes up with uh, 1896 and 1875. So Jung was 21 years old when Prabhupada was born. So it gives some perspective on him. He died in 61, which means what? He, he left his body just before Prabhupada came. So you understand the kind of world he was working in. He was working in a world without Prabhupada. <laughs> he, he was working in a very interesting world. Okay, go down to number 17. And uh, let me see where is F5. Yeah. So in, in the book, uh, Dialectic Spiritualism, a Vedic view of Western philosophy, uh, Hayagriva, and uh, this other one there, Shamasundar. They were presenting different philosophers to Prabhupada. And he was then uh, giving a commentary. And, but when it went around to like Western people, even friendly people, they said it was like a, you know, a kick in the face <laughs> comparison to Western philosophy. And it wasn't even you know, all that you know, accurate sometimes. So the BBT has stopped publishing it again. But it's there as like a, you know, kind of a, a, a nice dialogue. And Prabhupada discusses, amongst others, Socrates, Plato, Aristotle, St. Thomas Aquinas, Descartes, Leibniz, John Locke, Darwin, Henry Bergson, Sartre, Freud, and finally they finished with Jung. And then Howard Wheeler, Hayagiva said, that ends our session on Jung. And Shri Prabhupada says, so far he seems to be the most sensible. So taking that and applying it, you know, then we... Um, have really found that we've been really, really been able to contact a very, very nice, active, pretty robust community of people with their journals, their publications, and new, new information. And basically, looking at our perspective now, we can see that we would say that basically they're on the level of like Hiranyagarbha yogis. They, they don't believe that the gross material world is the cause of everything. They believe that behind it, there is a subtle psychological world which, will, which forces the scientists and other people to see things in a certain perspective and which forces us to act even contrary to the gyan level. So basically they've come to the gyan level and they accept this is real. And Jung's idea was if you want to understand God, and he was not opposed to God in, in much of any way, but if you really want to understand and you've got to go beyond the rituals, which he says are basically meaningless now, uh, karma, and you've got to go beyond even rational, logical understanding and come to the mythic or, or, or uh, what's the word, iconographic level. And this he found was very universal. And there was a universal level. Now, of course, how much we're going to go on and develop this and we're trying to meet people. Because that's the big thing. You meet people and then learning all these things you know, learning all these different things from the Bhagavatam, then we can be able to talk to people, uh, different kinds of people. Every single psychological circumstance we can co- encounter is there in Srimad Bhagavatam. Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai. So we finished off in 1058. Koi Any questions, comments, complaints, or, or contributions? Marash, I'm going to ask you questions. Um, okay. Yes, I guess you meant it to be a small point in the early part of your talk, and somehow it just it resonated in my mind, and 
it became the, sort of a, a background thought throughout your entire class as I was listening. Uh, you mentioned, you, said, you made a statement that there's no such thing as inertia. And I thought, wow, that's, uh, I thought about that for a minute. I thought, yeah, that's really cool. And I, I kept thinking about it and thinking about it. I want to make sure I'm understanding it the same way you are. Explain what you mean by there's no inertia. I want to make, I'm, I'm, I'm wondering if we're on the same page or not, because that's... Okay. Um, I, I'll give credit here. Uh, working with the Bhakti Vedanta Institute, I heard Rasaraj uh, Das mention that. But you see, Newton, Newton was also trying to understand material nature. And he said the reason he was trying to understand it was because he wanted to understand God. You know, and God, God is making the material world and we can see it exactly like Mars Perica. So if we understand the material world, we'll get some more very, like, good knowledge, you know. But he said, ultimately, you had to understand it through the Bible. You know, otherwise, without that, you know, Scripture, there wasn't much perspective. So anyway, he then came up with his basic fundamental laws of motion. Uh, I think that that's the first law of motion, is that a body in, in motion will continue with the same momentum unless it's interfered with by some other body like that. And the other half of that is, is a body at rest tends to stay at rest. Yeah. yeah it's also yeah. in the laws of inertia. Yeah. And so he, he generated his fundamental laws of, uh, of motion like that, mechanics. He also created the, uh, generated the uh, laws of optics, uh, laws of mechanics, laws of optics, laws of gravity. Uh, well, so he invented these incredible systems of mathematics, like calculus. He did all of this, I think it was between 18 and 21 years old. <laughs> you know? Wow. He, and he would be like, you know, you got, you know, you got a Nobel Prize for every single one of these. You know? and, and again, he, he, was a theist. he was a theist. Hey, Newton, Newton believed in God, you know. Yeah. But that's it, basically, yeah. The Krishna as the Paramatma, as time has to maintain the whole show. It's just like a juggler. The second the juggler withdraws his energy, the balls just don't keep going. Yeah? Yeah. So Krishna keeps thing, you know, going according to different, certain different patterns, like a pendulum. So it doesn't, doesn't go at an even, even flow. Pendulum speeds up, slows, uh, slows down, speeds up, slows down. And you can calculate it in terms of an inverse proportion ratio. So Krishna has these different kinds of Jambavan says this. Jambavan says it. it. These different kinds of ways that we can see the time factor, and then how Krishna keeps everything going like that. It's interesting. Maybe the second half of, of the of the law of inertia is correct. That a body at rest tends to stay at rest, because but the point in, in, the point in is inertia, what is rest? Yeah. What is well, rest? Like, 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 yeah. Let's let's examine the first half. But you shoot. You shoot a pool ball, and you've acted upon it, so it's going to, well, equal to opposite reaction. You hit it one way, it, you hit it, it goes. Then uh, it, it, it continues to move, and it appears as if it's moving because of the initial, uh, the, the initial uh, energy that was acted upon it. So as if it's, it's, it's sort of maintaining that energy and continuing to roll. So from when I was understanding what you're saying is that that the Lord, through the agency of the demigods, is actually continuing to move that ball all along. It's not that it just has some maintained energy, but there's some, something personal making that ball roll till the very yeah. end, until it finally stops. Therefore, I'm saying and the all, second half may be true, is that it's not going to move. If something isn't moving, it's not going to move until it's acted upon by some higher force. Yeah. But that's the whole thing we get into Einstein's law of relativity. Then it's difficult because nothing, not every, you know, what what is not moving? <laughs> it depends on which perspective you have. Hmm. And, it's, and this is the higher kind of speculation. Everything else, and then it's not not inappropriate, you know, finding out like what in terms of our particular service and thing, things are going on and how Krishna is you know, working. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Very interesting, interesting class. Interesting subject matter. Oh yeah, for us, I guess especially for your sailor. <laughs> a lot of forces, a lot of forces yeah. acting. And we see them. We see them all in the wrong way. Yeah. Um, Hare Krishna Maharaj. Yes. 
this is regarding the last line of the purport why he is praising his quality of determination i thought the quality of skillfulness should have been praised the okay i got to look up here at the purport uh the translation the translation or oh, translation okay yeah uh translation what are you sir kridasya okay um vale vale chama vale okay um second here oh master of all energies okay. yeah and de- your determination is infallible um yeah you play like a spider i don't know even from the the word by word meaning i was actually myself I was wondering a little bit why you know why it's there so i i didn't see see exactly you know i can't, can't see exactly why it might myself there it takes one week for all these purpose i think you know like that so i don't know yeah. okay mara and secondly you mention somebody being conscious of time can you elaborate on that conscious of time yeah what time is it now in bombay <laughs> it's 10:38 pm in in the evening yeah 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 uh what do you have to do okay yeah <laughs> everybody yeah, keeps these little everybody keeps these lists that keep the relative thing they know what's going to happen you know uh, for for example you know i, I could tell you what it's not 10:30 at night harsh it's actually about like you know 4:30 in the morning and that's why it's dark and a little bit will become light and so no you have this whole impression in your mind the studies in psychology that people keep uh different clocks in the background running you know so somebody is dark outside it could be um, morning or it could be evening but since some person you know says you know in the back we keep you know it's it's this evening and it's going to get darker as opposed to a no it's morning and it's going to get lighter you know so we have very simple clocks and more sophisticated clocks you know different combinations some again this uh, what's his name uh, ET Hall Edward Thomas Hall his book cross cultural studies of time perception are just incredible it is shake up you know any kind of physicist idea materialist ideas that we know you know because there's so many different kinds of time perception by different cultures around the world and they all they all eat sleep mate and defend some some of them better than we do you know with very different radical different understandings of time like that you know so that's you know we're all pretty much everybody's conscious of time you know because it's the paramatma you know without that you know fear fear is hang- hankering lamenting or or can only be produced if there's time so maybe that's the basic basic perception of time is fear of death <laughs> that's the basic basic perspective in the material world okay thank you very much okay yeah Maybe, maybe we touched on one point yesterday Mahesh ji was talking about and you know, how do we get advice from the spiritual master and I was just going to toss in that um you know probably describing you know, every brahmana you know, is is a spiritual master you know for different uh levels of society and so you know we can get advice some people have become <clears throat> in this kind of place a spiritual master is to a certain level if you want to understand what the four principles are if you want to understand how to offer things to krishna yeah then we can get this knowledge you know and then um rishikesh ananda in bomb in delhi you know in calcutta he was visiting different gaudiya mats and things and papa wasn't didn't chastise him apparently it seemed like he was doing it with you know some good you know good intelligence he was taking care of himself properly so then he he said he asked papa papa i want to take siddha pranali initiation you know i want to you know have you tell me what is my eternal relationship with krishna so i can contemplate that when i'm chanting my japa and everything else so he said papa told him uh, when you're ready i will give you you know and he said well papa what if you're if you're not here when i'm ready and he said papa responded even if i'm not here when when you're ready i will give you <laughs> so so any brahmana is our spiritual master you know, any you know people so many of the devotees have developed a certain level where they can be spiritual masters to guide us spiritually in our progress and when we get to the point of becoming goswamis 
jitatmana prasanta sya paramatma samahita. At that point, you know, we're, we're off the ghost platform and we're receiving uh, very tangible inspiration, you know, from uh, subtle sources. So when we're ready, to, ready for Siddha Pranali initiation, yeah, we're not going to take it from, you know, somebody who's just barely, barely generally realized the existence of Krishna, you know, but, but it's somebody who has a very intense relationship with Krishna. But at that point, when we're ready, we're off the, off the gross platform. So we can be as connected to Prabhupada as anybody ever was connected with him if we're ready for that kind of thing, even though he may not be grossly present. So that's my comments. Okay, so, so thank everybody very much. I guess maybe we should stop now. It's already sometime is here. 7.10. Yeah. Thank you, Maharaj, very much. And my apologies for, to everyone. So it's partly my fault. I didn't send it earlier. I'll try and do that. And, you know, I'm, I'm like a fool like everybody else. Oh, it's yeah. okay, Matraji. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. May everybody find your place in the spider web. Hare <laughs> Krishna.